everyone. In this video, I'd like to talk about adding rational expressions. And before I begin with example one, which is really our goal for the lesson, I'd like to do a warm up problem because they're really the same steps. And we have been adding up fractions for a while. So if we do the warm up problem and review the steps, we can then apply those to example one because it's going to be exactly the same steps, even though example one looks a lot more complicated. All right, so to review our steps for adding fractions, the first thing we want to do is find the least common denominator. So the least common denominator means we're going to find a denominator. So I'm looking down here at the bottoms of these fractions. I need a denominator that's common or the same. And I need it to be the least common denominator. So for example, I could say, oh, I'm going to find a common denominator between 5 and 100 of 500, but that's not the least common denominator. And you can certainly work with 500 as your denominator, but you're going to make life a lot more complicated and tiresome than you need it to be. So I'm going to get rid of the 500. And the way we find the least common denominator is we factor. So I'm going to factor 5. I'm going to write 5 as a product of 5 prime numbers. So that's just 1 times 5. That is not very exciting, but that's what it is. For 100, if I write this as a product of prime factors, let's see, well, 10 times 10, those aren't primes. I have to break it down further. If I break it down as much as I can, it would be 2 times 5 times 2 times 5. Yes, that's correct, because I have 10 times 10. All right, so by factoring our denominators, we can now look for what they have in common. We'll use that and any other extra pieces that were needed. So our LCD in this case is going to be comprised of a 5. We've got that in both of our denominators. So my LCD is going to have a 5 in it, that's for sure. Um, I'll also need another 2, another 2, and another 5. So I'll need a 2, another 2, and a 5. In other words, my LCD was 100. The next step is to convert your fractions so that everybody has the same LCD. So I'm going to take 2 fifths, and I'm going to multiply it by something that will give me a new fraction with 100 in the denominator. And to do that, I'm going to need to multiply by, see, 5 times 20. That would give me 100. And if I put the 20 down in the denominator, I better put it up in the numerator because what this is, this is like multiplying 20 over 20. This is like a giant 1. That's like a big number one. And I know multiplying anything like two fifths times one is going to give me some equation. I didn't change the value of two fifths because I multiplied it by one. It's just a weird looking one. It's 20 over 20, but it's really one. So I haven't violated any rules here. I'm just changing its appearance. So let's do this. Let's multiply two fifths times 20 over 20. Multiplying in the numerator, we have two times 20. That's going to give me 40. And down in the denominator, 5 times 20, that gives me 100. That's great. So our first fraction is 40 over 100. My second fraction was all set, 7 hundredths. And so my new expression is going to be, instead of 3 fifths, I've got 40 over 100 plus 7 over 100. So I've got 40 one hundredths plus 7 one hundredths gives me 47 one hundredths altogether. So I kept my same common denominator and I added up the numerator. For those of you that like to think in terms of money, if you're working in the grocery store, 40 hundredths, that would be the same as 40 cents. Seven hundredths, that would be the same as seven cents. And you would add your hundredths column, your tenths column, and you would tell me that that's equal to 47 cents. So 
these are things we've been doing for a while. And it's exactly the same step when it comes to the algebra. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to find the least common denominator. Now to do that, I need to factor each of my denominators. So the first denominator I'm looking at is x plus 2. I can't break that down any further. So you could write 1 times x plus 2 if you wanted to. It's not very exciting. It's the same thing as the 5. 5 was a prime number. This is like a prime factor. I can't break it down any further. Now this next factor that I have in my denominator, x squared plus 5x plus 6, I can break this down. And I, I'm really aware that I can break it down because, first of all, I've got an x squared up in that numerator, so that kind of indicates maybe I can break it down into two linear factors. You could go online and try to factor it. But you've probably been working with factoring trinomials like this for a while. So if you remember, we're going to reverse FOIL this. I have two little parentheses here. In the first position, I need to put a value that when I multiply it gives me x squared. So I'll need an x and an x. Now, the signs are all positive, so that means I've got all positives over here. In the last positions, I need two numbers that multiply to give me 6 and add to give me 5. So it's going to be a 2 and a 3. Great. Now I'm on to my LCD. I'm going to need one of these. So I'm going to need an x plus 2 in there. What else do I need? Let's see. I've got an x plus 2. I grab that. That's good. That's common to both. And the other item I'm going to need is this x plus 3. So that's going to be my LCD. The second fraction looks great. It's already tidied up. It's already got the LCD that I want. The first fraction is what I need to work on. So let's convert 3 over x plus 2, and I need to multiply that by something that will give me my desired denominator, which was this x plus 2 times an x plus 3 in the denominator. So what am I missing? Let's see, the x plus 2 is there, but what was missing, the missing ingredient there, the missing factor was this x plus 3. So that's what we need to multiply by to get our desired least common denominator. And again, I'm thinking about this giant 1. I'm multiplying something times 1. So if I put the x plus 3 in the denominator, it better be in the numerator as well. And again, in my mind, I'm looking at a big giant 1 here, and I know anything times 1. That's a pretty sad looking 1, but... You get the idea. Anything times 1 doesn't change the value, just changes how it looks, but it's still the same value. That's why this is a legal maneuver. All right, so let's multiply. In the numerator, we've got 3 times x plus 3. 3 times x plus 3. And I'm going to leave it like that just so that I don't make any errors or lose anything. I'm going to just keep everything tidied up. Uh, like that, and I can multiply it in the next step. All right, so now let's just make a little space here. We're ready to roll. We're ready to add up everything. So our first fraction, new and improved, instead of 3 over x plus 2, I've got a new fraction there that's going to be 3 times x plus 3 over my LCD. Plus. The second fraction that was already looking great, there was no work needed on that puppy, I'll write the least common denominator in its factored form. That way it's really obvious to my eyes that I'm adding apples plus apples. I'm adding two fractions that do have the same denominator. Great. So when we add fractions, the denominator is the same. I'm going to bring that over here. And now I've got a little work to do up in the numerator. So I've got a 3 times x plus a 3 times 3. I'm distributing that 3. So that was 3x plus 9. Good. And then my second fraction, I had plus 5. So far, so good. We can clean this up a little bit further. 
Let's make some space there. So our final answer here in the numerator, I only have three x's. There's nobody else I can combine with three x. And then in terms of the constants, I've got nine plus 15, excuse me, nine plus five, that gives me 14. And in the denominator, I have this LCD. Now, one hint that I have is keep, I'll write it down, keep the LCD factored And the reason I say that is because sometimes you get to this last step and then you can cancel and it's just easier to see what you can cancel if you kept your denominator factored. So my hint here is to keep your denominator factored until the very end.